It's like, oh, you don't do therapy? Oh, you're not mentally healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, How the fuck do you know me? That is so fucking infuriating. Isn't it that. though, right? It's like, because I always talk about, hey, it's like, hey, if you have some some thoughts that you don't have anybody to talk to about or you need, you know, specific help with certain things, try therapy out. Yeah. But it's, now it's gotten to the point of like, oh, this person doesn't care about mental health because they're not in therapy. Right, right. Not everybody kind of needs it in that yeah. type of way. If you have friends to talk to? Yeah, you're all right. <laughs> in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Genius Brain Podcast. It happens to be on every Sunday, just like church. <laughs> and this is a non-secular church, so I'm battling <laughs> Jesus right now. And But I believe in the Jesus of Christ, too. I'm not a best Christian, but I am a number one follower. Okay? Do, do, do you see, like, Ryan Garcia going crazy right now? Oh, dude, okay. Is this full-on coke? What is going on it's with this It's not coke. That is some, like, meth-type shit. It is. It's it's crazy shit, dude. He's Who, who's weird. Ryan Garcia? A boxer. boxer. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I, I was like, I had a disconnect. Ryan Garcia is acting really fucking weird. Like, he went on uh, Andrew, the, what's it called? Not Spaces or whatever, where you talk on Twitter, or X, I mean. Oh, I didn't see that with one With Andrew Tate. Mm. Oh. And then he was like, fuck it, I'm not scared. I, I, I was at Bohemian Grove, and they held me down, and they made me watch a two-year-old get dirt. Like a, yeah, like. Or some shit like that. Well, they they armed me when I was a I baby. Think, like I think uh, he's going crazy. What? Yeah. I yeah. think I think he's he's having legit, you know, mental issues. Yeah. I don't think it's drugs. I mean, because he's, he's an athlete, right? Yeah. So it, it I don't think it's the drugs. So it was Oscar but, De La Hoya though. Yeah. yeah. I'm motherfucker did a shit ton of coke. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like coke inspires <laughs> Stephen King novels, <laughs> and Dune. You know. Yeah, yeah. But, so he was screaming about him getting repaid yeah by people when he was a little kid yeah at bohemian grove what's bohemian grove it's that secret society like giant owl statue where world elites and former presidents go to like uh kid rock was there he talked about it on joe Rogan. dude um alex jones actually sneaked there and and filmed video there. oh really yeah it's a real place they talk about it on house of cards that's the first time I heard of it. Mm. Like, cause you know, it breaks the fourth wall with yeah, Frank yeah. Underwood. He's like, yeah. yeah, this is a real place. Yeah. So like, who's invited to this Bohemian Grove? Like, like this- former presidents and like CIA, like uh, chiefs and like just the elites, the top of the top, mm. the 0.01% type of people. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's a good look for him to go into a boxing match and be like, I got my booty hole touched. Yeah. Like, That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, how are you promoting a fight while talking about this? Yeah. Well, like, I mean, it is, it is doing its job, right? Because people are talking about him and, and, and as a result, talking about the fight. I mean, I don't know if it's intentional. I don't think it is, yeah. but yeah. I'm saying it's a tragedy. It's fucking terrible. That's fucking disgusting. But it's like, don't give ammo to your enemies, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. I would at least try to look as composed as possible before the fight, and then maybe go with Andrew Tate and then talk about the Bohemian Grove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, man. It's That sounds to me like an episode of Schizophrenia, to be honest with yeah. you. Uh, because I've, I've dealt with people with schizophrenia, and, you know, the shit that they go off of, man... Yeah. It's fucking wild. You would think they're on drugs. Because cause he on Twitter, he's like, I believe in Jesus Christ. like, uh, And so I'm not going to kill myself. Like, yeah. if, if someone does that, like, it's not me. It, it's wild. And so his latest video is one of his trainers making him sign a contract. No drugs, no alcohol, no weed. Mm. Only, like, uh, just working out, only training, all that. And he looks like a mess. Yeah, like I, and he and he's signs going the paper. into a fucking fight. Yeah, yeah. That's dude, terrible. What the fuck? He should not be. He should not be allowed to fight. Then, if he's mentally unstable right, like that, right? That's insane. What's going on with this? I dude? mean, I know that uh, coming out of the pandemic too, he was talking about his bout with depression, like mm-hmm. and it, how it got really bad. And he, I think it it caused him to actually take a break from boxing as well, so that he could you know kind of better himself mentally. Um, I don't know, man. But it definitely doesn't just sound like a drugs thing. It man. sounds like he's having like a, men- a, a yeah. momentary psychosis, yeah, schizophrenia. I, I don't know, man. It's like, dude, how old is he though? Like 25, 26? Yeah, he's pretty young. Old. He's a young kid. He's young yeah. as shit. It's like you have a kid. You have all this fucking money. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Like yeah. you're actually in a position in your life where you could create your own destiny. For most people, the holdup of doing what they want is simply money, right? 
and he has all that shit. And technically, he still has his fame. He could probably make more money doing other things. Yeah. But then once again, if he's mentally unstable, none of this matters. Right. If he's right. Britney Spears, then he's out here with two knives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Dude, clout is a fucking <laughs> clout in and of itself is a hell of a drug, right? Poison. But yeah, that drug is not something everybody can handle. Mm. And it's it's very interesting to see the trajectory of like Ryan Garcia, his name and his story went from being like a prodigy in boxing and this guy's the next big thing to now he's just a joke he's crazy like you know he's he's lost his mind all because he lost his last fight well i mean you know or with tank the other stuff yeah well, well it was after tank like pretty much that was the beginning but even before that i think his was kind of on a decline because he started clout chasing for online well, he was like jake paul he was with all these like social media people. yeah and people are like dude if you want to be a boxer be a boxer what yeah. are you trying to be a fucking influencer or a boxer yes you know? they started calling him like an influencer instead of a yeah, boxer right so like you know I, I don't know man like fame is not something that is it's uh it's nothing that i would ever prescribe to somebody right because it just it always corrupts without fucking fail especially if you don't have a strong foundation for right because like you'll see a lot of people who come into this space they had zero friends there's a reason why like you know like a 13 or 12 year old is in his room making videos by himself right it's like right you don't have friends and so they kind of create this community these people idolize him they know nothing about this person they could be the biggest piece of shit in the world and they're kind of like surprised like who, who is this guy it's like well you never knew him this guy never had friends he doesn't have any social and this is also the problem too like i was talking about in my solo videos it's like these people who were like young childhood stars who did the the most desperate thing for views just so anybody could recognize them so they could feel something it is they're now older and now they feel like they're in a position to give somebody life advice mm. you haven't experienced life yeah. you don't know what fucking anything is at all and you want to tell people about how the world works what the fuck do you know about how the fucking world works you don't know at all you know how it's like when it's fucking spoon fed to you it's very fucking different. It's like when you look at people like Will Smith's kids, right? Or uh, Jaden Smith. Yeah. yeah. He, you know, I remember when he was, he did this interview where Tim showed me where he's just like, dude, you know, like with, ugh, I hate kids my age because, you know, when we hang out, they just want to talk about, well, let's go party and drink, <laughs> man. But can we just talk about like the social and economic status of the yeah. world? I will fucking beat the shit. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk to you yeah. about that either. Ex exactly. Like, Why the fuck, the fuck yeah, would somebody want to talk to a 13-year-old about yeah, that? Like, what the fuck do you know coming from a privileged-ass life? You don't know what the fuck is going on on the ground. Level, yeah, I man. love. Listen, and this is this is some coming from somebody who idolized your father, right, Will Smith. But after that jaded stuff, I can't look at it in the same way, dude. Mm -hmm. I literally can't. <laughs> yeah. And then for him too, you know, like where celebrities like you don't know what's going on behind closed door. Yes, I do. You had a whole show about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, I do know everything. Yeah. That's the problem. You yeah. keep telling everybody everything. Mm. It's like information that none of us want. <laughs> none of us ask for it. They're like, oh, why are you guys judging me? You put it out there. Yeah. Nobody asked you to sit at a table and talk about, yeah, I let my wife get fucked by another man. I was cool with it. Yeah, you don't know me. Uh... Uh, you keep telling us stuff that nobody asked for. <sighs> Jada Pinkett Smith, you fucking clout chaser. Yeah, Biggest clout chaser of all time. So fucking sad, bro. It's just a we. Is that the rain? God damn. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to rain right now. But like the weirdest thing about that too, like, you know, with somebody like Ryan Garcia or anybody else, like a lot of these like social media cats, it's like none of them realize that you're not in a position to help anybody else at all. Like you can't even help your fucking self. Yeah, man. It's so fucking sad what people are willing to do to get attention, to get clout online. And then on top of that, the wor I think arguably even worse is the fact that people eat it up still. Yeah. Even even if it's meant to criticize, like, look how fucking stupid this clip. Yeah, but you're giving it notoriety. Yeah. If you really feel that way, don't consume it. Don't share it. Don't talk about it. I right? think a lot of us love to see somebody's downfall too. Yeah. That's part oh, of the yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. there there definitely is some sort of fascination, weird, morbid fascination with the, the downfall of somebody, mm -hmm. even to possibly suicide or like, you know? No, I just had a conversation with a person of mine who's also a social media personality. And this person was talking about like how exhausted they are. It's like, 
how do you do it? Like, how do you do what you do? It's like, I don't think you realize. Like, I only post when I want to post, mm-hmm. right? Whether it does well, whether it does bad is out of my fucking control. I'm out of that rat race now. You, yeah. think, you don't think about the numbers. You don't think about the comments. You just whatever. go on. Like, yeah. my main thing is now is like, if my objective is to make somebody laugh, then I'm just going to make them laugh. Right. Whether it's 1,000 people, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, it doesn't fucking matter. And I'm also in a place of privilege right now because I always say I, I've earned my shit. So it's like I went through the part of being fucking broke as shit, $200 in my bank account, can't afford shit. You know, I've done that now. And so now I'm afforded this life where it's like, okay, I don't have to think about that. I can just create now because I know how to work what I work. And if if not everybody likes it, nothing goes viral, who the fuck cares? Right. I just get to enjoy what I'm doing. And I think for this person, they're like, well, I was like, well, the content you, you create, the problem is, is that you have now developed a community where you're personal self-worth is now tied to comments and likes Mm. so the purpose and the reason why you post has no longer become the reason why you create it's like you just do it because you need to do it for brand deals you need to do it for money you need to do it because you feel this personal responsibility and self-worth because of what somebody else writes so now when they post they don't even know if they're doing it for themselves or they're doing it for somebody else those worlds have become this and so they're lost now they go well Am I posting my family because it gets me views or is it, am I doing it because I enjoy this moment that I have with my family? Mm -hmm. Now it's like when I record my family, is it for memories or is it because this is good content to grab? And it's like, damn, I don't even know what to say because I've never been in that position. But for me personally, I would never get to that position because what's sacred to me is sacred to me. And so like for them, now they're in this point where they're like, okay, it's hard now. I can't tell the difference. It's fucking difficult. So I don't know what's going on with Ryan Garcia, but you start becoming that clout chaser influencer, you don't know what's reality anymore, yeah. right? It goes back to that Logan Paul thing where he just he recorded the dead person, uh, in the, the, Japan the Japanese forest, forest. Yeah, suicide yeah. forest, and he had a coming to Jesus moment too. He's like, oh shit, everything in my life is content, like what's real and what's not. I don't fucking know. Mm. Now it's like every action that I do is for other people's entertainment. It's never for myself. He's yeah. still a scumbag, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of his personality, but then, like, um, I saw clips of him with John Cena. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. It was interesting the way he was talking about The Rock again, um, because uh, it was he was also running in that I'll show you if you're not yeah. if you're not fucking with me, and then now he's saying, oh, like I don't know if. It's not that I've forgiven him. There's what's there to forgive. He, had he didn't do he anything. Did. It's like, do I forgive myself yet for that back then? You yeah. Know? And that's like what he's working through. So I'm like, you know, for, you know, such a fucking asshole, like you, you're pretty self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that could be a grift in and of itself too. Hmm. Right. I mean, that, that's right. Just... When people use therapy language. Yeah. You don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't know with this guy, but I think there's still clear evidence that, this guy really doesn't give a fuck about, you know, a lot of things that should be important. Like the crypto zoo whole Yeah, incident, that shit is right? terrible. He fucked over so many of his fans and he takes no responsibility for it, you yeah. know? He says he will. Again, it's easy to grift, you know? But <laughs> that's the hard part too, especially like with people with, you know, uh, there's this conversation about how popular therapy has become. Right. To the point. Well, because I always I like therapy. Right. Um, I use it very sparingly when I need it. So like therapy has become almost this thing where it's trendy now. It's like, oh, you don't do therapy. Oh, you're not mentally healthy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. How the fuck do you know me? That is so fucking infuriating. Isn't it though? Right. It's like because I always talk about hey, it's like, hey, if you have some some thoughts that you don't have anybody to talk to about or you need, you know, specific help with certain things, try therapy out. Yeah. But it's now it's gotten to the point of like, oh, this person doesn't care about mental health because they're not in therapy. Right. Right. Not everybody kind of needs it in that yeah. type of way you're, you have friends to talk to yeah you're, you're all right, <laughs> you're, right? <laughs> you're apparently a broken and shitty human being if you don't you know it's like partake every in problem that i have i need a therapist for well now you've become a useless human being <laughs> your, your therapist should be giving you tools yeah. for you to manage your life without them mm-hmm. well i i feel like i see that kind of therapy and wokeism stuff as a religious experience for some people Mm -mm. because they get aha moments. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And so when they get those moments, they're like, oh, I'm a better person now, which means everyone else is not as good as me. So I got to teach. Yeah, I got to teach them. You got to come on to come to my Bible study. No, get therapy. Like kind of the same thing. Oh, it's this. Dude, you just fucking blew my mind. That's exactly what that shit is, right? Because they'll do this thing where 
like we talked about this too, where I'll mention it again. It's like, hey, what goes on between you and your therapist is what goes on between you and your therapist. <laughs> Stop taking this nugget of information and try to therapize my life when you're a st- when you're still a turd, yeah. like you fucking <laughs> garbage bag. It's projection. Like they're just too. wait. It's almost like they're waiting to go to therapy yeah. so they could get this knowledge so they could tell somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not there to better yourself. You're just yeah. there to be like, oh, what else? Can- yeah, what, what else can I learn without going to school Yeah, <laughs> and learning psychology? And then tell somebody else how to live their fucking life. Yeah. And I think it's the weirdest fucking thing because they're weaponizing therapy now. It's yeah, like, no, it's crazy. Just, it's, just read a book then yeah, on it. It's, yeah. it's become really convoluted. I got nothing against therapy. But, you know, some people are just not aware that not everybody else is like them. Maybe somebody's not as mentally fucking brittle as you are. Yeah. You know, and and the the problems that you feel are very real to you is not that big of a deal to somebody else. This this is like full disclosure. I've been in therapy for the last eight years now, like uh, consistently and not with the same therapist either. Mm. I've had many therapists say, I can't help you or we can't see each other anymore. So Mm. I'm, I'm like over 15 therapists now. Wow. I just haven't given up. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. The The difference is like in the way where I kind of gave up on religion, quote unquote, you know, there's that relationship with God. That's another story. But then for me, it was like, OK, I felt like I'm at the end of the road with um, reading through the Bible and trying to find more nuggets in there. But like I know there's something missing on the other side that I don't know about myself, because while I was at church, you know, in my 20s or before that and all that. I know I was an asshole. Mm. I was a jerk. Mm. I was annoying as fuck, right? And I'm trying to grow in myself. And so when when I, whatever I'm speaking now, I'm not going to say it's all them, but then, yeah, there's been growth, you know, side by side with marijuana use. (laughs) (laughs) Therapist in and of itself, too. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's because I I felt like it was the last line before I do something to myself, mm. you know, I'm going to try and find all the help that I can get outside of my own perspective. That's great. That's, yeah. that's fucking fantastic. And people should treat it like that. But you know, but when, there's a lot of people yeah. out there who's using it to be better yeah. people like person than other people. Bro. Yeah. You, I mean, I'm sure you're aware of it too, since you know, you, you're in the dating life and scene yeah. of girls like, they require you to be in therapy, right? Like, I, well, I haven't been with a, a girl like that. Yet. No, 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 not yeah. not even to be with a girl. But like I've that, seen, but coming oh, across. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and it's just like, what what is this require? Well, I think I feel like certain certain like young girls because they just watch Instagram and t- this is what exactly I, exactly that's what it is. And it wraps back to that thing of like, hey, so when social media people tell you how to live your life. Throw that shit away. Yeah. Even when I tell you things, just listen to it for entertainment. And if it applies to you, it applies to you. They take memes as their Bible. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, you know what I mean? That fucking yeah. hit me right in my fucking heartstrings. Dude. When you fucking just wake up with anger, that's them, not you. You're queen. Yeah. And then in the, like... What the people fuck? People make, like, design 10 slides of all the fucking, you know, Halle aha Berry. shit. Like, yeah. yeah. And then you swipe through, the, yeah, like, dude. learn about all this shit. Like, read a book, talk to, talk to a therapist if you can. There's other modes of, of betterment, you know, not yeah. like being better. Yeah, they'll, people. and they'll probably throw that thing. In. It's like, if you're a man who doesn't do therapy, then you're toxically masculine. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, right? no. It's, it's, it's like that. And it's, you know, along the same lines of the fucking whole idea of like well what are you bringing to the table yeah like aside from sex well shit you better bring that fucking money too no the real question is what are you bringing to the table yeah. <laughs> you know what you what, got- what are you offering aside from the two fucking kids and a divorced you know yeah. lifestyle that you're living it's like right? fine I, I got toxic masculinity fine you got toxic pussy juice bitch yeah. <laughs> how about that how it's do you like, like it no, we're it, not asking you for your fucking 40 right? yard dash yeah, yeah. It's, it's so crazy that they take you know sometimes uh it, it's it's it could be just they're, they're they're fucking grifting again using the word grifting they're a grift and they take it as like the gospel yeah. you know uh or or they could even be joking about it mm. but they think they're serious about it they're not realizing they're just doing this for content but you're taking it at face value of like That's what i'm saying this is the truth people don't know reality and social media anymore yeah it's all become one yeah the, the the expectations they have out of somebody else is not the expectation they expect from themselves they expect everybody to be perfect and well kept by the time they meet them it's like dude 
that's nobody. Everybody is a broken person, right? And we're always just trying to pick up the pieces. Like, there's very seldom have I ever met. Actually, I've never met somebody with a perfect life. I know people who are so good at faking their perfect life. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. fucking well. And when I meet them, you find out their life's in shambles. But what they'll do now is that they'll, on their Instagram, they're not faking a life per se. They're writing a narrative and a story about the life they wish they had. Right. Every day. So they'll be like, oh, I'm here with my husband who I love so much. Thank you so much for taking care of my family. Hey, you can't just say it to the guy's face. You got to write it on Instagram so he could comment and be like, thanks, babe. <laughs> oh, my. I'm so lucky to have you every day when I wake up. Dude, your farts smell like potpourri. I breathe it in through a vape. I like put it in a vial in a cartridge. I turn it into an oil. Give me that concentrate. <laughs> yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, man. You don't just say it to that person exactly. ever. Like, I Listen. There are people who I see now that I have to mute because I like them as a person, but I can't watch their shit right, because right. it's so just disgusting to me, right? It's like, this isn't you when I'm hanging out with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's like I know them as a person, as an individual, so it's like I'll take that person instead mm-hmm. because like it'll be some shit like this. I've had the longest day ever. I've had no time for myself. I have to cook. I have to do all these things. How am I going to live? How'd you set up the camera and the lighting then? <laughs> <laughs> How you do that? Yeah. If it's so hard, you can't see your kids and your family yeah. in this time yeah. where this was so how did you set up the camera and the lights and how many takes did that take you to record how that? many times did you do it dude there i saw this video uh ripped from tiktok it was on twitter it was going viral this girl was it, the caption says like when you have an episode with borderline mm-hmm and this girl is boxing the fuck out of her closet door and punching holes mm-hmm. in it. Wow. And she kicks it and her foot gets stuck. Wow. And she's like wrestling with the door yeah. and pulls it out. Then she turns around, goes to the camera, and then like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm having an episode. Hold up. Let me set this up. Turn on the live. Let's record. Okay. Let me resume. Dude, and now it's gotten to the point to where they do that shit. And then anytime they th- have an emotion, like an emotional breakdown, they know that people start empathizing with them. So they'll go through something tragic and they'll set up the camera first. Yeah. But it's you like know... you don't live in the real world anymore. You do not. You are the most untrustworthy, dishonest human being now because nothing you do is real. Everything is a performance now, and they can't tell the difference. I know, but you know, again, man. The they, Matrix. They, <laughs> they do it because people fucking consume that shit. They get the views. They get the likes. Even even if it's a negative uh, response that they're getting from it, either way, they get notoriety. And, and that's why it's like this, you know. It reinforces bad habits. Too. Exactly. It exactly, constantly man. reinforces bad habits by rewarding you for your bad fucking habits. Yeah. You are not a real person. Nobody trusts you. Nobody fucking likes likes you that's the fucking problem too dude let me just tell you this quick story too like fucking so this past uh like a couple weeks ago you know like i've gotten a couple of comments from people who didn't get invited to the wedding mm. right mm. and it's been very simple i was there yeah you were, were you there, there? you were there, there oh, right yeah and guess what <laughs> you guys, you guys know it makes sense for you guys to be there yeah right yeah. it yeah. makes sense yeah there are people who in my mind, I'm like, it doesn't make sense for you to be at my wedding. <laughs> it's like you follow me yeah. on social media. That's yeah. it. Like it's the weirdest thing, right? Yeah. And so I had to sit and think. It's like you don't know reality either. Right. Like your friendship with me is a one way street. Like you think that we're really, really close. And I know that we're not. But because whether it's like this guy's reasoning was kind of like a this is what this guy said to me, which threw me off. And, you know, he talked to he said this to me and he tried to quote unquote confront me, but there's other people around. So I'm like, oh, you're smart because, you know, I'm not going to call you a fucking idiot and tell you to fuck off with all these people around here. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, smart move, dude. Mm-hmm. Smart friend. Fucking checkmate. So he just sits <laughs> here and he goes, he goes, he says this completely false statement that other people can't refute because they don't know. They're like, well, I just thought it was fucked up that I wasn't there because I've been there for you. And I'm like. <laughs> and you know when he said that I, I kind of like brushed it off and then after a while I started thinking about I was like been there me for what like, like when how? was I going through something <laughs> you know so I'm like sifting through my shit I'm like I pretty much handle all my emotional stuff by my on my own yeah. right yeah. I never put my emotional burden on other people ever that's what people know me for they're just like how come you you taken our problems and then we try to therapize or help you and I'm like because I'm pretty good <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can solve it. I could, I have my mom to talk to. I have Mariel. I have other people. But so I don't really do that. So when he said that, I'm like, 
what? <laughs> like you've been there for for what? Yeah. Like what have you done? Like, what have you? And I'm like, kind of like scrambling through my head. What did you do? It's like but, remember when you dropped that chopstick? I had to get you a new one. <laughs> so I had to, no. So I had to think about this, and I was like, oh, this is this is who this guy is. He tally marks stuff right, in friendship right, where he right. goes. I did this for him. He should do this for me. <sighs> I did it. He's Worst. hyper opportunistic. Yeah. And he's always had this weird quality. Yeah. I just never thought it was like with me. And so I'm like, we're not even that close. I don't think you understand our friendship. So in his mind, it's like, oh, I've invited you to my house. We've had barbecues together. We ate together. You've been around my kids. That's everybody. That doesn't mean we're close. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Have we ever had deep conversations about anything? If anything else, every time I see you, I just make fun of you all the time because you annoy the fuck out of me. <laughs> like, you're you're a periphery friend. And then he starts bringing examples of other people. Mm. He's like, well, this person was at the wedding. And I literally told him, I was like, I've known them for 12 plus years. They're like Damn. my closest he, friends. He broke it down like that. Yeah. Bro. And then he goes, what about this person? Like, wow. these other people. You've known them as long as me. I was like, yeah, I like them more than you. <laughs> <laughs> or I have a more meaningful relationship with them more than you. Yeah, I was like, Mar I was like Mariel likes them more than you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right i don't know if that was the appropriate thing to say but it's truthful and yeah. it's honest because it's like why would you even say that like it like socially it's stupid yeah it's it, it, clearly he lacks that self-awareness or is and or delusional because in his mind like you said he thinks you guys are you know like that <laughs> and here's the thing too because like he's he loves social media it's like he only comes around when he can grab content mm. so it's like you You've you're he also has mixed social media reality with actual reality. I see. It's like in these videos, we're the best. It's like yeah, because you first of all, you didn't even ask me if I could be on the video. Mm. You just po you just fucking come around and start filming us, yeah. which we already don't like. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm just like you know what, like you fucking you don't have anything, so whatever, just go ahead. Like, you, know, <laughs> you know, like your your content is based off other people. Whatever, just fucking do it. Is he a content creator? Wants to be. Oh, wants to be. Okay. Uh, so he wanted to make more content at the wedding. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, and that's one of the other reasons why he wasn't invited. Because mm. I know, guess what? All my friends who came to that fucking wedding, guess what they didn't do? I didn't even have to tell them. Yeah. They didn't vlog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All my social media friends, they know I don't like that shit. They know how private my fucking life is. I didn't have to ask them not to vlog. That is that type of friendship I have with people who were invited to that wedding. That's how close we are. Yeah. Yeah. Right? He would not have done that. He would have brought the whole <laughs> vlogging kit, the camera lights, the ring light. Fucking idiot. So it's like, oh, this person thinks we're best friends and we're fucking not because he like he he has mixed social media with this type of stuff too. And there's also stuff about him that he's done really stupid shit with, but he doesn't even remember that stuff. So like even for me if I brought it up to him, he wouldn't he would deny everything. Yeah. I could bring in evidence He's he's riding your coattails then. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I said, like so he felt entitled to still drag along with yeah, the wedding like, suit. <laughs> and the, 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 the funniest thing this fool said though, he goes, he goes, I just want to let you know, it's like I'm happy for you, but I was hurt. <laughs> that means you weren't happy for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that means you weren't happy for me. You fucking idiot. I already thought you. I thought you were okay. Now I just hate you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like now we're not. Do I told Mariel this? She's yeah. like. Fuck this guy. Yeah. Meryl doesn't say that about anybody I know. Yeah. Right? And then she's like, what the fuck? How He's like, we had a 70 person wedding. And in my mind too, it's like, dude, there are friends from Sacramento who I fucking love to death. I had, they weren't there. Yeah. Right? Why the fuck would you be there? Yeah. You, and here's the truth. I didn't say this to him in person, which I should have, but other people around, I wanted to tell him, it's like, dude, if the wedding was 200 people, you still wouldn't be invited. <laughs> <laughs> If it was 400 people, yeah. I would invite your wife and your kids and you wouldn't come. <laughs> it's like it's like that's how unaware he is. It's right. like you you fucking weird. It reminds me of like when, you know, you really started to pop off on YouTube, you know, many years back and kind of like these uh I mean, I guess acquaintances <laughs> and and like just, you know, not close friends would invite you to the wedding, some even requesting that you s come sing at the wedding. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, we we don't know each other like that. Exactly. You know? Also, you're asking me to come and work? <laughs> yeah. It's like, the, what the fuck you think I am? Like, some sort of... Hey, notice you know? this. Everybody in, in in that wedding too that came, they're also a part of the industry. Videographer, you do video. Hey, Ed, can you film my wedding for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I've been like asked to film so many weddings like every year. It's always weddings 
or porn actually. What the fuck? I would wait, wait, like like, like like some amateur porn shit? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And <laughs> that's fucking weird, that's bro. Weird. Like, hey Ed, hey, I consider you a good friend. Can you shoot some porn for me? Like, <laughs> Can I keep my pants on or off? <laughs> yeah. No, what well, but then it'd be like, yo, um, you want to come to the wedding? I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And it's like, yeah, can you film it? But I'm like, uh, no, I'm not no. Coming. it's like, yeah, it's so well, it'd terrible, be like, man. you know, can you do a friend discount? And I'm like, nah, I mean, I, you know, I, I got to pay bills or whatever. So are you inviting me to the wedding or are you hiring me for a gig that so you would that's like? That's the thing. If I deny the friend discount, uh -huh. I'm not invited to the wedding. What the fuck is Here's that, dude? This is, this is what I truly believe, right? If you want to give a discount because that person is your friend, that's really generous. For the person asking for the task, you shouldn't ask for a discount. Because if you're willing to pay full price to somebody else, you should be willing to pay full price for your fucking friends. Yeah, right. The fuck are you talking about? Right. The other way around is different. If I'm a friend and I say, hey, I want to do it for half. I'm not going to take half this money. I think it's okay. But I don't want to ask my friend for a fat discount because I'm if I'm willing to pay somebody else full. Yeah, yeah it's like, is it like if anything, wouldn't you want to support your friends even more, right? Instead yeah. of like trying to take money out of their pocket. I had my buddy uh, Josh, right? Like we, our wedding was full, but I, I've known Josh forever, right? So I was like, how can I sneak him into my wedding without going over the capacity of the venue? Mm. And so I asked him, I was like, hey, how much would it cost to fly you out for you to MC this shit? I was like, it's super easy. Most of the time, you're just gonna have fun, mm. but I want you to be there. But the only way I can sneak you in is if you're an MC because mm -hmm. <laughs> there's because there's a capacity. Yeah. But then like um, he, I it was all planned out. I was gonna pay for his ticket and all that other shit too. But I wasn't asking him for a discount. I just wanted him to be there. Right. Yeah. So it's like the only way I could get you in there is like if you're an MC because 70 person capacity, we're, we're fucking full. But then they already with the venue came that whack ass fucking DJ. Yeah. So we're like, okay. Well, <laughs> that guy was funny. <laughs> Dude, the DJ at my wedding was so fucking whack. But then I was just happy to have everybody there. I just didn't care. Right. And this fool, I gave him a playlist, first of all, for like the wedding shit he, yeah. he only played like three songs dude it was so funny because this dude is like 55 60 years old <laughs> and there's like no mixes to the track you go from like a slow jam and then like a hardcore fucking hip-hop joint it's like and taylor know. swift yeah <laughs> yeah so at the end of the wedding i'm supposed this is like our last song right he goes everybody's gonna love this song and i was like oh i thought mario asked for this taylor swift song I was like, uh, oh fuck it we'll just jump and dance to it yeah i hated it <laughs> but i thought mario loved this so it made me happy to see mario and i asked mario i was like He's like, I, I'm surprised you chose a Taylor Swift song. She goes, I thought you chose that. <laughs> so we both yeah, were just enjoying thought, it for the other person. I thought person. it was so yeah. random. I thought it was Mariel's choice too. Yeah, it was. I was like, I know Dave didn't pick this, so I guess Mariel <laughs> likes this one. I would have chose some fucking Bay Area fucking <laughs> slappers, dude. I'm too short or something. Yeah, I would have chose the two E40. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have <laughs> fucking chose that shit. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ had dress so shaking. I would have chose some fucking hyphy ass shit yeah so i was kind of shocked that i'm like that you were definitely not worth the money even though you were weren't that expensive it's like you <laughs> suck so bad dude it looked like he just came from his fucking accounting job and yeah. then got into a suit that guy fucking was like... sucked dude but it, it didn't matter because it was such a small wedding and everybody was happy yeah 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 but yeah yeah like i understand too it's like oh this guy has now put his position in my life of like you were like an uh, like a cool acquaintance to like i fucking hate you yeah Dude, it's so fucking weird. It, okay, it's one thing to wonder why you didn't get invited, but to like call you out on that in a it. in a public setting at that, not even a private conversation. It was like fucking like twelve people there. Yeah, with other people there, like yo, man, that's such that that tells you all you need to know about his self awareness. You and know? like, he, I think he knows who I am too. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you chose the safe space because yeah. <laughs> I'm not socially stupid. I'm yeah. not gonna go out there with people who we don't know. Yeah, and just be like, you fucking dumbass. How fucking dare you ask me? Right, like, right. You like it was already stressful enough as it is, and also you don't know your place in my life. Like, there's no way you would have ever came before any of my other friends, mm -hmm. right? We've shared meals together. I know your kids, whatever. That doesn't mean we're good friends. Yeah. Like you do that with everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what the fuck is your problem? Like, are you a fucking dumbass? I'm not gonna do that with the group of people. Smart move, guy. Check me. <laughs> Check fucking mate. And I kind of want to call him to be like, you're fucking stupid. But the problem with that is because he's so oblivious, it does nothing. Yeah. He does that with his personal life. He does that with other people too. So I'm like, even if I roasted him, he would just be like, woe is me. David yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> David was so mean. And then he'll tell other people, 
can't believe David Yeo. Dude, I, I was, I, you know, he always talks about being a good friend, but he didn't invite me to it, and I'm a really good friend of his. To you? You think that? You tell <laughs> other people that David is your good friend. Yeah, like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about, man? Yeah. Fucking weird, dude. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, like, you've experienced this time and time again in L.A., bro. It's just those people who think... Or, 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 like, want to believe that, you know, they're good friends with, with and certain... And you don't want to be my friend, dude. I would kill you. <laughs> yeah. You would question your fucking life yeah. every day. It's like... It, and I've roasted this guy so many times publicly, too. Mm-hmm. And he gets in his feelings. Well, what are you picking on me? <laughs> <laughs> you think you don't want to be my friend? Yeah. We roast each other all the exactly, fucking time. Exactly, bro. What are you talking about, you tard? Yeah, I've, I've had that experience where, you know, um, there's a guy I've known my whole life... And uh, he moved to L.A. And this guy was just borderline delusional with it. He he came down and just expected me to film a music video for him. Oh. Just like that. I was like, what? No. And he was actually upset and angry. Like, I came all this way. Yeah. And you're, I'm like, no, I'm not going to make a fucking music video for you. Like, yeah. do we even discuss this? Right. What the hell? Right. You know? And yeah. then... It it came down to where I realized, like, oh, you want to be a star. Yeah. You know, you don't want to grind. You don't want to do the work. You're waiting for an opportunity to fall on your lap. Right. But you need a leg up here and there or whatever. You, you know? know what you should have done? Yeah, have you seen those videos where people have that emotional violin playing in the back and they're doing, like, all the crazy camera edits? <laughs> and, it's, and they show you the final product. It's, like, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You should have shot it for him and gave him the shittiest video. It's like, yeah. dude, I got all these great shots. Just... <laughs> Just that, of pettiness. Well, that happens all the time <laughs> too. When people ask me to make a music video and I give them their idea, an idea, and it's my idea is always going to be off the wall first, so we can tone it down. That's how yeah. it always should be, right? But then I, I'll always run into people who are like, oh, oh no, no, you know, and then they don't want to do it, right? Yeah. The only person who says yes was Paul, Paul yeah. Kim. Mm. I always have this crazy idea. He's like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you know? But then, like, same with this kid, like. You know, over time getting known, I I had to put him in his place. Well, in a sense, because I'm I'm older than him and he sees me like young. But um, so he listens to what I'm saying. And what I realized was like back home in Washington, he wasn't listening to what anybody was saying, even though he had close relationships with them. And they tell him what was up and he not listened. But when I broke it down to him, it was... It literally broke his reality. Mm. Like he had an existential crisis of who he was, where he was, like what his purpose is, and it it broke him. And I actually felt bad. So no, you in saved a him sense, time. You saved him yeah. time in the long run. In a sense, like I understand why some people won't say nothing. But there's been times in my life where I look back where I'm like, why didn't anyone just tell me something? Why didn't anyone just give me the truth and reality? Because I where I was living in my own reality, I realized that other people saw the truth and weren't telling me. <laughs> yeah, this guy, people have told him. Yeah. And he's always like, <laughs> yeah. he's always like, he's always like, well, you know, always has an excuse. Yeah. That's why the habit's already there. Mm. So, for example, we have another mutual friend, like, like she's gone in on him. Like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you can't do that shit. You can't say shit like that to people. And he just, ooh, ooh, ooh. always like brings up this like, <laughs> woe is me, sad story. Yeah. My life is so hard. It's like, shut the fuck up. And so for me, I just, I always found it entertaining from a distance because mm. I've never had to experience it myself. Yeah. And then when I experience it for myself, I'm like, fuck, I see what people are <laughs> like. But once again, he's never that close to me. Yeah. That's why I thought like, oh, we're not. But now I realize too, because everybody else has ostracized him and they, they've made fun of him. And so now he's coming to me because I've never, like I said, we're not that close enough for me to actually right. have, confront him about yeah, anything. My only response in that case would have been, I don't understand why we need to have this conversation right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it would have just been that. Yeah. And if you don't understand that. And look, even... I did a very good job because I have evolved as a human being. I just started making jokes. Uh-huh. I was like, you weren't allowed to come to my restaurant uh, or my, my, my wedding because there's a height limit. You're too short. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I started making jokes or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I'll have a 70 person wedding, yeah. you know I mean? which was true. Yeah. 70 person money there's no way he was going to make it in and then you know when he starts bringing up like well this person was invited this person I'm like are you actually hurt that's why when I went home I'm like wait he thinks we're like best friends or some shit <laughs> right. like oh you're fucking weird dude <laughs> like I said just because we've known each other for a while or we've spent it, there's like a feeling that you get from somebody yeah. but it's like oh you only felt it on your side I never 
gave you a reason to. There's a, there's the work he has to do to come to a self awareness. Yeah. Too, right. Right. Because there are certain people who talk to someone and they respect them, and then look, give me the truth, and then they'll hear it. Yeah. Right? Like I had a friend I met up with. Uh, this was a little while back. Like, um, you know, when I met up with him, it was always like him being sad. Like, you know, because you know he should mourn. Like his his dad passed away, right? But then it was like every time I saw him, right? And then, like, it came to a point like we were at Dick's, and we we're just you know having shots, and he's just talking about it, and I'm get, and I was like, bro, like you need to get over it. My dad died too. Okay, and I've never told you about how I felt about it. Yeah, never. But it's like if that's everything that your life is in, like you need to crawl out of that space right now because you're yeah. not yourself, you know. And thank God, yeah, he grew out of it. You I think know? Like the weird thing too is like I started to realize, and I've done like a couple of podcasts about friendship because everybody has these questions because like developing good friends is really hard. But yeah. it's like people confuse like time with somebody. As like we're really good friends. Like I could have known you for twenty years and we were not friends, mm. right? I could know you twenty years and you're you're like like a cool acquaintance. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, and they're if they can tally shit or in their mind, if you have to tally why we're good friends, that means we were never good friends. Oh, for sure. That and the same thing in relationships as well. Yeah. Right. Um, like you're using it as a weapon. Right. It's like what kind of relationship is this? If you if you have to go, I was there for you. For what? Yeah. Tell me what it is. <laughs> well, let me pull out my you know, yeah. and, and tell <laughs> that's you. my checklist. Yeah, that's the thing about this person too, and I've you know I've seen it too with other people where they kind of go, oh, he likes to tally shit up. It's like, well, remember when I did this? Remember when I? Did? I'm like, you're not a good friend already. Yeah, like you're somebody that is opportunistic. Yeah, and just to clarify for people who don't know what opportunistic means, because there was a, I, I did a podcast on this, and there's some people like, there's nothing wrong with being opportunistic. Opportunistic is not a is a positive adjective. <laughs> If you look up the definition of it, somebody who takes opportunity, whether you step on somebody else without any moral concept at all, that's what an opportunist is. Yeah. You're talking about a go-getter. Yeah. A go-getter and an opportunist are two different things. One has morality and the other one doesn't. Right. And so with this person, I realized, oh, you're an opportunist. You come around for content. You come around because of how it makes you feel, but you don't care about how other people feel. So it's always you complaining, us therapizing you, and then when we don't need advice, you like to give us advice. It's like, we don't need your fucking advice. <laughs> nah, dude, there's there's so many fucking people like that. I mean, I remember too, man, when we were younger, we had this homie who, you know, admittedly was going through some hard times, right? Uh, struggling financially, struggling at home, whatever. We all didn't have money, but some of us were better off than he was. Yeah. And as a result, like, we're like, hey, man, we got you. You know, we go out to eat. Hey, we'll all pitch in, cover your meal. But it started getting to the point where, like, this dude is coming out for every single fucking thing, you know, every meal, every outing, never has any money. And it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, hold up, bro. Something, man. Hold up, bro. Like, now it's getting to the territory of, it, like, it's seeming like you're taking advantage, yeah. right? The, the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me was... This dude comes out to one of these outings rocking a shirt. And I didn't really think much of it, you know? A few days later, I go to the mall, and then I'm just, like, checking shit out. Now, this is when, you know, at a time when things were yeah. actually displayed at the mall, the new items that are, that came out, right? Yeah. I go to this store. Lo and behold, the shirt that he was wearing is a brand new item that just came out, and they're, right. and oh. they're, they're advertising at the store. I was like, hold up, man. So you have money. Yeah, this motherfucker talking about this shirt cost fifty dollars. Oh shit. Yeah. Ho hold up, man. Hold up, man. By the way, back in the day, fifty fifty dollars for a shirt is a lot. Exactly. It's like a hundred dollar shirt now. It was it was it was um I believe it was a Stussy shirt. Oh shit. Yeah, I think it was like forty five dollars plus tax. Yeah. Average shirt back in the day, like a decent one was like twenty five bucks. Yeah. So that's dumb. Um I mean it, it was enough to display it on the mannequin on the on the yeah. store window. I'm like, hold up. When is the last time this motherfucker pitched in on anything? Right? And I'm like, oh, this motherfucker is just, he's a fucking leech. Yeah. And, he, and he wants to pull the sympathy card all the time, right? Now, fast forward like many years later as an adult, I run into this dude randomly with some other homies. We're at, we're at uh, El Torino, which is a taco joint in LA. And this was when I was doing music and things were starting to kind of like go well for me. We started having a conversation. He was trying to get into entertainment. And he asked me like what I've been up to and I tell him. And he's like, 
like half joking, like, oh, forget these other guys. I need to be talking to you and hanging out with you, bro. And I was like, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that instantly makes me not want to talk yeah, to you yeah, right yeah. now, bro. And I just cut off the conversation right there. I was like, hey, man, good seeing you, bro. I'll catch you up next time. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But that's who that dude is through and through. Yeah, it's you know? weird. Like, also, too, it's like, are you that, as a human being, you're so not aware of who you are as a person. Yeah. And even with this guy, he doesn't know how... Listen, if you ask anybody about this person who met him on a personal level, like he has good, great qualities, right? Everybody does. But the, at the end of it, like his rotten core is there because he's very narcissistic and selfish. And what he tries to do is make himself seem not like that by making you feel bad for the things that you did, right? <laughs> so it's like, oh, you didn't invite me to your wedding? And out of nowhere, from fucking in oxygen and air, he goes, remember when I was there for you? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? That never happened. Yeah. But to other people, they don't know, right? And then his reason for that probably, I don't, I never, I didn't confront him because obviously I find it pointless to, is if he's not going to change, is other people thinking, well, he, you were, he was there for you during the times you needed him. Yeah. And I'm like, I've never needed him. Right. He was right. never there for me for anything. Yeah. So, but no, people don't know that. Yeah. So it's like, oh, so the only option here is for me to kind of call you out and call you an idiot and make it very uncomfortable for everybody. But he knows I'm not going to do that. He would do that though, which yeah. is why he decided to bring it up with a group of people around. Yeah. Right. It's like, dude, this makes me hate you now. Like, <laughs> I now, just like in the other podcast at night, <laughs> <laughs> praying for the demise. No, the only time that's like really came out for me in conversation is like, let's say in a relationship and you kind of get into an argument. Maybe, you know, uh, my girl's like feeling like, oh, you're, you, you don't ever think about me or care about me. And then you have to bust out the receipts. Mm -hmm. now, hold up. What, what do you mean? I don't care about you or I'm not considerate of you and your feelings. And then you start to recognize just how lopsided it is. And that's yeah. why you're able to yeah, fucking yeah, fire yeah. these things off. Yeah. Then you start to see the fundamental flaw in the dynamic and in the relationship, you know? That's when you got to reevaluate things with your relationship with that person. You guys have no idea, young people out there, how much Venmo has saved your relationships. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have Venmo back in Gosh. the day, dog. We didn't have none of you that shit. You had to bring shit. cash. You had to bring cash. And then some people had to pay a little more here. Some people had to pay a little less here. We had this other dude. Let's call him Gerald. All right. So this guy, Gerald, listen. I've definitely understand in his case, like when things are going bad for you as an individual, you like to spread that poison to everybody else and you don't even know that you're doing it. Mm. So over pandemic, you know, we have this thing called th a Friendsgiving. We have it every fucking year. Um, and so we decided to do it Zoom online and we're just drinking wine or whatever. He makes like some random salty comment about like, oh, what's up? You're doing comedy and stuff like now. He's like, you know, you got your humor from all of us. So, you know, we should get like a slight, you should shout us out. Ugh. And then I looked at him. <laughs> And after that, and by the way, I was already drunk. You know what I mean? And I stopped and I was like, what oh, the man. fuck are you talking about? The, just uh, the, the word that popped into mind is the audacity. The audacity, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm like, okay. And then I just start going in on him to the point where he just left the Zoom call. Oh, wow. Right? And then everybody else too, like I called, I was like, did I go a little too hard after he left? They're like, mm, I, I feel it was pretty bad, but that was kind of awkward. Why did he do that? I was yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. Like, maybe you guys should talk to him because I'm not <laughs> dealing with that type of shit, yeah. right? And also, too, it's like, you know who the fuck I am, dude. Like, come on now. I'm not going to let that fucking slide. Yeah. And so after that after that whole thing happened, he got into a better position. He has a good job. Suddenly, he's like the nicest dude. He's not saying that shit anymore. Mm. So it's like, that's, that's also a sign of who he is as a person. It's like, you can't be happy for somebody else's success unless you're successful yourself, mm. right? And so that in and of itself was like another sign. It's like, oh, you are not that cool. Like, I would, in my worst time, I never did that to anybody, yeah. right? Like yeah. when other people were doing well, yeah. I either asked them for advice or, you know, I try to better myself to kind of reach up to that level. Right. I never try to drag my fucking, you know. Yeah, see it as an inspiration, not as something to be salty about. Yeah, and, but this guy too was very well known in high school to, we would go out to eat and let's say his meal is, I don't know, eight bucks, right? And then he, but he would put down five. Oh, and then no. we're like, oh, we're missing. And there's another girl named Kathy. Kathy would always make up for, because she would always work part-time jobs. Terrible, and she bro. would always pay for a shit. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. No, we, fuck that. Yeah, and then one day I called him out. I was like, hey, man, you're short like 10 bucks. He goes, yeah. no, nah, my shit was like $8. It's like, yeah, you paid five. 
And he's like, oh. <laughs> and it still like, doesn't the math make sense. Ain't math in right and it now, still homie. doesn't make sense. Yeah. And then he'll put down three. I'm like, cool. Now there's tax. Yeah. And he goes, what? I'm like, yeah, there's tax. There's tax and tip, motherfucker. Yeah. Do and you then live he, in a different world? So not only did he not pay the right amount, yeah. he forgot about tax and he forgot about and tip. And he's trying to short you every fucking level. Exactly. Like, wait, 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 what, what you mean tax? What, and what, then, what is that? Guess what happens? He stops coming out to eat as much. That, yeah, that happened. Good riddance. Fuck that yeah. guy. That happened with a collaboration. Um, collaboration with a K was like this Asian American, like, you know, of talent show talent thing. Show, yeah, but yeah. We did things all throughout the year. And so essentially it's a volunteer work thing, you know? Mm. Um, and so all of us have jobs outside of collaboration, except one guy didn't have a job like collaboration was his job but it's yeah. like it's not like you're getting paid dude right yeah and but with collaboration after every meeting or whatever we always go out together you know but it's kind of still like a workplace thing like we're, we're not we don't have that kind of friendship relationship we just all know each other because we're all in on this one goal yeah but this guy with going to norabangs going out to eat or like to the bars no money <laughs> no money and one of the executives because she was a leader, yeah. kind of, you know, okay, like throw in or the rest of us had to throw more in. Yeah. And I just remember I was pissed drunk and I was probably outside smoking a cigarette. She's screaming at the dude. <laughs> like, Rightfully so. She got tired of it, right? Yeah, she yeah. got so tired of it. And then I never saw him volunteer. Again. Well, that's dude. what it is too. It's like, have you no shame? Yeah. right and also too it's like that's like an example of somebody who wants everything but doesn't want to do the stuff to work for it yeah and that's the hard part it's like do all of us here work our asses off to just to make just to get by and then we still have to cover for you when you're here chilling and then you get to reap all the benefits of everything that we do right yeah. it's like the same shit as like taxes that's why people get irritated when they have to pay so much taxes and nothing happens yeah. mm. but now it's at a fucking in a smaller world it just irritates the fuck out of you. I don't care if I'm doing well and every now and then I'll chip in. I'll pay for a fucking meal. But if it's every time you come out and you expect it out of me. That's what I'm saying. Like, do you not have any fucking self-respect? First of all. Yeah. Like, dude, what do you like? What do you think is going to happen when you got no fucking money and you're partaking in an activity that requires money? Yeah. You fucking sheep sack, you it motherfucker. It ain't no fucking just magic shit that appears out of thin air, right? Yeah, dude. I hate that shit, man. Especially like when I'm poor and then they're like... You, I still have to mooch off of me. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Even like sometimes now, like sometimes, you know, people will say backhanded compliments. They're like, oh, here you go. Kyle owns all these businesses. I was like, does it look like I'm rich, dude? <laughs> does it look? I don't even have shoes on. <laughs> like you barely have pants on. I barely have pants on. I, this shirt, free. This short, free. Uh, yeah. The boxes I have, 12 years old <laughs> does it look like i have money yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about if i had money you, there will be signs you yeah. will fucking know i am going to say so much dirt on this podcast you yeah. have no idea that'll be the sign that i'm fucking balling out of your mind until then i am not i don't have and it's like kind of crazy it's like oh you you're like coveting my life when you don't even know what my life is like Mm. Right, it's like you don't know what it's like to try to fucking run these businesses. It's hard yeah. work. Yeah. Like if I'm balling, you would fucking know. I would probably have my own studio shooting my own podcast. I would hire these guys. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, come to my house. <laughs> right? It would make it easier for me. Right. I don't understand where people get this from. It's like also too is just to bring that up and like, why are you thinking negative thoughts about me? Like, what did I do? It's like, oh, it's because you don't like your life. So you want me to be miserable so we could feel equal. It's like, or you could be like, hey, I want to open up a business. Can you give me some tips? And I would tell them, don't do it <laughs> if you're not ready for it. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. The secret society thing during pandemic was fucking hard. Yeah. Right? Like you, you don't understand. Like I think even to a secret society, they're like, oh, they got this huge team. No, I don't. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's like, no. it's literally Dude, it. I mean, fucking even before the pandemic, right? Like. Um, when I had first quit my job to start like, you know, chipping away at this and, and start developing this is like work. Yeah, dude, I was living off savings. I wasn't fucking going out. I was fucking eating the same shit every single day, like value, thinking about this, as much value as I can stretch out of my dollar as possible. I didn't put myself in positions to spend money. I'm like, oh, this is happening. They're calling me out. If I go out, I'm probably going to spend money. So, no, I'm going to just stay home tonight, right? Or stay home all the time, pretty yeah. much. That, but 
well, where do you think my fasting came from? <laughs> you yeah. said money. It's like, <laughs> I can <laughs> eat. Ed is so dedicated. This is not no. a health benefit, you know? <laughs> Don't have money. <laughs> this is necessary. <laughs> That's why I look at other people too where I know some people where I know how much they make. I'm like, how are you going out to eat every day? Yeah. Like, are you out of your fucking mind? Like, that's mm. fucking insane. Yeah. Like, you don't have a job? And I'm like, they're like, cooking a meal for all my friends. You don't have money. <laughs> Why are you? How is this possible? Right. They're like, have prime rib roast or whatever. Like, yeah. some, some shit I can't make. Well, I'm shocked that when I learned, like, the amount of credit card debt that people are in. That's oh, probably what it is. Yeah. Sure, it is. It has to be credit card yeah, debt. It's I'm, it's financial responsibility. I'm, one guy I remember, like, uh, out on the East Coast, um... He, he let me stay over and like he, he's driving a BMW. He's got the nicest clothes. He's like living in a dope spot, and we're drunk now. We've we've had two bottles of soju each. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, bro, like I'm in like sixty five k of credit card debt. Oh my god. Sixty five k. It's just how idiotic, you, bro. How do you have that kind, that kind of line of credit to begin with? It's like I hope you know dinner's still on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I came here thinking you were rich. I have no money. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I, <laughs> he's telling you this, and you slide the bill over. I know. Uh, <laughs> like, like, damn, you got sixty-five k. Damn, damn uh, what's another five hundred? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's, dude, what the fuck? I I didn't even realize that was possible. Yeah, I think you know, like, and then you know. Uh, there's just a lot of people what they see is like the money right mm. and then what everyone keeps to themselves is where it comes from yeah 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 it's, yeah, it's posturing too what's the know? point of that though it's well, like it's cares? it's it's about being perceived a certain way and you see that in la all the time right <laughs> I, re I remember there's this church retreat right and then these guys this guy just showed up to the retreat and he didn't sign up or anything <laughs> and so we're gonna be like dude uh you can't stay yeah. here or or eat with us because yeah. you, you didn't pay for, pay all for this. it yeah. yeah he's like what you don't think i have money oh huh? you don't think i have money and he pulls out his wallet right he's like look at this and look at this and look at this credit cards <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's not money, money. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't pay for it reminds me of that scene in the in uh, the office when michael scott is struggling with money oh, yeah. like michael are you having money problems He's like, if I was having money problems, would I do this? Takes out a dollar bill, screws it up, puts it back in his yeah. <laughs> That's not doing anything. <laughs> you don't think I have money? Look at all these credit cards. It's like, yeah. you have a lot of, $65,000 of debt is insane. Credit card debt. That is yeah. fucking, that means how many not, credit cards he's opened up is unreal. Not a business loan or thing. Yeah, like. well, I'm sure this dude has personal loans and shit too, man, yeah. on top of that. I think what's the average statistic? Like the average American is at least 10,000 in debt or something like that. Yeah. I, I think something like that. Dude, I had this, you know, credit card debt once because of, you know, all the businesses that opened up. It was like, it was. You like, said what? All the bitches that all, opened up? All the businesses. <laughs> I said, what? I was like, damn, they was no profit money like that. Let me tell you something, man. Your dick stuff all the time is expensive. It's very expensive. Especially the good ones. I said, like, damn, bro. Like, I remember right, I saw my credit card debt. It was like it was like 17000 Yeah. Yeah. And I almost had a fucking heart attack. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, shit. Dude. And then I'm like, okay, I got to pay this shit off. And yep. So, and, you know, I think sometimes too, but people, this is like ghetto people shit. They'll rack up their credit card because they want their uh, bank account to look bigger. But it's like, it's still not your money. Yeah. It still has to come from there, you right, dumbass. Right. And so they're sitting there and they're like, oh, also there's interest. So yeah. when you rack that shit up, it's not 65K next month. Yeah, exactly. And the month after that, you're right. paying the minimum. It's, it's, you're still like, your debt is going higher, dude. Right. right. No, I'm, same, same for me. The yeah. only time I had debt was with Secret Society, like yeah. the starting stages of it. I, I, you know, I had to, I had to fucking live off my credit card at some point. When, when I turned thirty and I paid off all my credit card debt, I just cut them up. Mm. I don't use credit cards anymore. Mm. Yeah, like I, I just been like, okay, I, I should just use cash or whatever. You no, know, no, I mean, my ATM that's, card. that's good for some people to be, be aware of that, of like, hey, I need more self-control yeah. this way. I know I'm not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's great though. I gotta use that app that tells you how much stuff you subscribe to because sometimes I'd be looking at my, my credit card, I'm like, I didn't spend anything. There's like $200 here, what happened? <laughs> I definitely probably subscribe for some stupid shit, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. And I only realized that because recently I've been getting a bunch of emails. The payment didn't go through and I'm like, what's this for? <laughs> and I went in I'm like oh that's right I did pay for the service uh -huh. it'll be like some kind of video editing thing or some uh, shit yeah, I'm like yeah. oh I did because my credit card I, yeah. I, I had I 
I didn't get stolen. I lost it, so I had to switch it out. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, now I know why where this money was going, and all that shit fucking adds up. Right. Like I have no problem living below my means. I don't give a fuck what people think about me because some people will be like, oh, you've been on YouTube, you didn't make all this fucking money. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I put my money in all these businesses. All right. So I'm not balling out like you guys. All right. I'm not here fucking spending money. All right. I go to the grocery store. I only get choice beef. That prime is too expensive. It's delicious. I can't even eat beef anymore. <laughs> 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 I, dude, fucking meat is so expensive, dog. Yeah, I've I've definitely found alternative meats to get, and that's what I'm saying like I don't know how people are surviving, because like I could do okay, but like some people out there just they I know they're not doing as well. Oh yeah, no, there's a ton of people, the working class people that are struggling in America for yeah. sure. But I think it's because of the way American society looks at being you know, below your means or whatever. It's not good to not have money because everybody on cloud, what do they say? Like they say, they talk about, you know, what they have and what you don't have. Yeah. And I think that's just the problem with society not being able to say, hey, like I just don't have. Yeah. It's, because, that's okay. <laughs> right. No, because there's that sense of making felt inferior, right? Yeah. To the rest of the people. It's like, oh, look at the way they're living life. That's hey, how I should be living life. That's the status quo. It's like, no, that's not the, you find your status quo. Yeah. Yeah. That's their status quo. And you could eventually get there, right? It's like sacrifice now so you could have more later. Exactly. Right. And it's not even much of a sacrifice because you got to really think about it. The things that you quote unquote want is nothing near what you need. Yeah. If you think you need it because other people make you feel inferior because you don't have it, yeah. you don't need it but if you just sacrifice for let's say three years then you can have it yeah see those are the things that need to be taught at school things like financial responsibility good financial responsibility habits look at these slides <laughs> there's no grip left <laughs> you understand <laughs> there's no grip left yeah. i still wear these i don't deserve new slippers yet yeah. okay uh, I, like for for me i actually listen to a dave ramsey audiobook okay and, you know dave ramsey gets a bad rap or whatever but he's got some good methods in saving money or or getting yourself out of debt yeah you know like yeah he mixes it in with like christianity and stuff which i don't believe in like because you know you read what jesus says about money and it's <laughs> it's not dave ramsey style yeah yeah but like at, at least you know there's resources out there to you know just get over your ego or whatever and just look at your situation and then, you know, stop spending on so much this and then put it back into this, you know, get secondhand furniture. Hey, man, or, or Facebook both. Marketplace is my joy. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I don't know what it is about a fucking deal. Yeah. Ooh, I can't fucking wait. Like, I'm like, ooh, look at that fucking table. I don't even want it. Offer and up and, and Facebook Marketplace. I love that, yeah. especially yeah. for like camera gear, guys. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of you guys obsess about like, how camera gear looks. It, it it matters about what comes out of the fucking thing. Yeah. Like if you could get it used, get it fucking used, Bro, my guy. And and not only getting it used, selling your shit that you think might be trash, you'd be surprised the shit that people fucking buy. Oh, dude. dude on offer up, I fucking sold this IKEA table that costs I think like forty bucks or something, right? Um, I I I uh, dropped something on there and there was a, a a visible dent on the top of the table. I'm like, I should probably toss this when I was moving. Like, wait, you know what? Let me, let me just, just for shits and giggles, let me throw it up for 20 bucks, offer up. I got 20 bucks. Dude, yeah. guy's like, do you have more? I said, <laughs> what, do you think I'm in the business of selling Dude, damaged tables? And even for me, I sell my equipment for pretty cheap for the for the way that I keep it up. But for me, I look at it like this. It's like, either I keep this and it doesn't be used, or I sell it, and then I could put it to something else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, I'll sell it. For, and they're like, you sure you want it for this price? I was like, I've made more money keeping this than just not keeping it. So, if you want it and you're going to shoot something, you can even resell it. I don't give a fuck. As long as I got my good value out of it. Like, yeah. I sold my, I, I bought my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera used for 1200 mm -hmm. and I sold it for 800 That's a great fucking value. Yeah, That's yeah. $400 for two years of usage. Right. It's like, and they got it in great use, and I added extra accessories. So, I probably didn't make anything off of it at all at the end of the day. Right. But I got to use it for 1200 bucks for two, three years. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah. That's way more than I would have got in rentals because I shot, you know, three years worth of podcasts on them. So it's like, yeah. I got my money's worth. Let it fucking go. Yeah. Well, guys, that wraps up this uh, episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. For everybody out there that's poor, just stay poor. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's okay. It's okay. You're okay, dude. You don't got to go ahead and get like the hors d'oeuvres and the amuse bushies. All right? Just get the fucking, <laughs> get the main dish yeah. and then split it with somebody else. Dude, okay? live that top ramen life if you got to live it. And pretend know? like you're full even though you're not. All right? <laughs> oh, I'm stuffed. Yeah, get practice it. fasting. Yeah. <laughs> Eat half sandwich. Oh, I'm so stuffed. I can't have another bite. But really, you're just too poor to order it. 
anything else and then have other people feel bad for you and they'll give you their food. Yeah. I've done it a lot. Just get the six inch. <laughs> yeah. Get the six inch sub, dude. It's no, dude, buy one, get one, man. Oh, uh, if that's going on, yeah, take yeah. it. Uh, take Download the, the McDonald's app. This guy taught me. McDonald's always <laughs> yeah, has great coupon yeah, deals. Yeah, bro. <laughs> You'll be fine. Secret Society, S C R T S O C I E T Y dot com. High quality fashion basics. I will put my shit up against everybody's and shit on them. All right. That's how proud we are of the product that we put out. Everybody who has got a piece from us, it becomes a staple. And you walk around, people are like, where the fuck did you get that? You got it from this guy's ball sack. Right <laughs> All right. You can catch Ed at Ed Park VP. And Bible study at Momo, Genius Print, every Sundays at 12 p.m. It's glad to be back in the studio. I love you guys. Kiss me in the face. I'll kiss your mom. <laughs> bye. All right, bye. <laughs>